I'm going to apply it um, quite close to the edge of the mould purely so that we've got room for break areas and so on and so forth. Um, right, what I need now is some sort of, if you've got any core mat or something that we can use just to put around in the break area because I'm going to put a vacuum track all the way around the edge. So other, other than the core mat we, that we're using here, is there any other materials you can use for? Oh right, um, yeah you can use just glass or some people won't even bother with the break area. Um, when you've infused a few components and you know how much resin you're putting in, um, you don't necessarily need one because you shouldn't be pulling too much resin out of your component afterwards. Because we've not done this before and we don't know how much resin we're going to put in, I've just got this there as a um, sort of secondary backup to the catch pot if you like to try and stop the resin getting pulled through into the vacuum pump. Um, Obviously, the, the, the core mat that's thrown there for the resin runoff that's going to be touching the mat that's underneath. Yes, yeah, it, um, otherwise, it isn't going to work. Yeah. Um, it, you need, um, basically, you need a vacuum track um, to allow the air and the resin to be pulled through. Um, so, wherever you're pulling vacuum through or putting your resin in, it needs to be in contact with your laminate in some way. Right. Okay. Um, there's a bit of excess peel ply left on there to pull it off. The advantages of using a release film is it's useful to put under resin inlet and outlet lines to make them easier to take off. Um, there might be some areas of your laminate where you don't want to peel ply, so you can use a release film instead. Um, this is a specially developed infusion release film. It's got a hell of a lot of holes which uh, allow the resin to migrate through it a lot more easily than your traditional P3 release film. So the release film obviously gives you a, a, a smoother inside of the laminate. Yes. It, when you take it off, yeah. It's never going to be perfectly smooth, but um, obviously peel ply gives you a really rough textured finish, which is good for painting or secondary bonding. Um, that's not always required. So a release film is a slightly cheaper alternative as well. Okay. Um, with two different infusion meshes to give you the eye. Um, demonstrate both. Uh, the second mesh that we've got is a diamond mesh which depending on the viscosity of your resin is going to depend on which mesh is best suited for your purpose. So you can see this is quite a fine knit which is good for the um, less viscous resins where if you've got something that's incredibly thick and treacly then you might be better off with a diamond mesh. Um, again, trial and error, it might not always be the case. So, so does it matter on this mesh if you 
have any overlaps on it or not really no um you might find that in areas where you have overlaps the resin might race up a bit faster than in areas where there isn't any mesh um, it shouldn't cause you any major problems if it does then again that's something you need to address and then um, make sure you don't do it for future uh, laminations Right, so we've got the two different meshes in there. Um, this is the diamond one, and what was the? That's the blue? A knitted mesh. That's the knitted mesh. Yeah. And uh, VI one and VI two. And what's the differences between those two again? Uh, it's for different resin viscosities primarily. Um, the blue mesh tends to be better for lower viscosity resins, whereas the VI two, the diamond mesh, tends to be better for um, higher viscosity resins. It uh, just allows the vacuum bag to stand off the surface a bit more. And as you can see, you've got a um, much bigger open area there. We'll probably see later on when we apply the resin that uh, what I'd expect to see is it to race along the diamond mesh a lot faster than it would the blue mesh. However, that being said, it probably won't happen that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, right. Grab that as well going to be our resin inlet and I've just put a, a T-piece in the middle. So what is that? What is that? Infusion wrap. Similar to the uh, the cable wrap that you get to wrap your um, computer wires and things like that in. Um, there are reusable options out there but it's a good cheap throwaway system for anybody who's doing relatively low level um, work. So that is just going to sit on our laminate surface there. I'll just take the ends down. And that just goes over the area where the um, where the release film was placed. Yes, yeah. You, you don't really need a release film, but um, what you'll find is, is after you've taken the um, consumables off, you'll probably end up with a bit of a mark off on your laminate surface from where the um, resin inlets be. Now there are products to avoid that. Um, I've got sorry, this product which we call combination wrap. Now what this will allow you to do, it's actually got a loop sewn into it. If you can see just there. So what you can do, you can thread, and again it's not really practical for a smaller mould, but uh, you can thread your spiral wrap in You can chop that out like so and you can apply that onto your laminate surface. What that actually does, it will stand the resin inlet off your laminate surface so it will reduce the amount of print through that you get onto your component surface. Uh, that can be stood up in a plate in the vacuum bag as well, um, so it's relatively easy to apply. So that's quite a good product.